Hey guys, it's Margaret. I am by no means a pro at watercoloring, but I've been doing a little bit of practice here and there, and I've developed a few techniques on how to incorporate watercoloring into your bullet journal. Watercoloring is a great way to ease into painting. Using other paints, it's really hard to work with if you're not a pro because it's hard to finesse them. But watercolors are great because the water does pretty much all the work. You just have to kind of push the paint around. So watercolors are great for beginners because really anyone can do it. And it's gonna dry and it's gonna look beautiful no matter how many years of practice you've done. But before I get started painting, make sure you guys subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our bullet journaling tips and tricks. Okay, let's get started. I don't like to paint straight into my bullet journal because if your paper isn't taped down well enough, it's going to warp and it's also potentially going to bleed through a ton of different sheets of paper in your bullet journal. So to avoid all of that, I paint on separate paper that's a little bit thicker and built for specifically watercolors and cut out those little elements and paste them throughout my bullet journal. So before you get started watercoloring, make sure you have the right paper and that it's thick enough to hold the watercolor and it's not gonna work. If you can only manage to find semi-thick paper, make sure you tape it down really well to the table that you're working on so that the paper does not warp when it dries. Another reason I also like to draw on different paper and then paste it into my bullet journal is that it gives the page a little bit of dimension just by creating shadows with the paper and the bullet journal paper. The next thing I'm going to talk about are brushes. This is a brush pen. It's from Faber-Castell, but I know a bunch of different brands do it. Um, and it's really nice because it has a pen tip end, so you're going to be able to get really nice, clean lines. Um, but it also allows for you to uh, bring water up into the top compartment so that while you're painting, you can add water to the paint. So you never have to dip constantly into the water cup and go back to your page. This brush has a wider, thicker tip, so it's gonna be great for large areas of your paper and large washes that you wanna do over the entire page. For the paint, there are several different options that you can use. There are paint that you can get from the tube or you can use paint from a tin. There's even paint um, that comes in sticks. I personally like using paint straight from the palette like this because I don't have to have a separate palette for all of the paint. The palette's built into the tin. And I also like this because it's a lot less expensive. Paint from a tube or from a stick is going to be very expensive and a lot harder to use. A couple other essentials that you absolutely need are a couple sheets of paper towel that you're gonna use to wipe off your brush from color to color and two cups of water. You need two cups, not just one, because one is for cleaning your brush and one is for adding water to the paint so that you don't get the dirty water mixed in with the nice clean paints. And lastly, make sure you have a few other essentials for bullet journaling after you've cut out your watercolor elements. So any pens, scissors, glue. I like scissors and glue. They work best for cutting the paper and putting it into your bullet journal. All right, so that is all the supplies that you're going to need for watercoloring. And now I'm gonna show you a few techniques. There's two different techniques that most watercolor professionals use. One is wet on wet and one is wet on dry. Wet on wet is going to be adding wet paint onto an already wet piece of paper. So you're gonna wet the entire page and then add paint. Wet on dry is going to be taking the watercolor paint and adding it to a dry piece of paper. I'm gonna show you both of those techniques now. To use this Faber-Castell pen, you're going to unscrew it and you're going to dip it into the water and pull this plunger up. Now you can see that the Faber-Castell pen is about halfway full. Now you're gonna take the rest of your pen and screw it back onto the other compartment. First, you wanna always make sure that your brush is completely clean, so dip it in the dirty water cup and wipe it off just a little bit. The first thing you're going to do is take your clean water and make a shape or object, whatever you feel like drawing, with the water. So I'm gonna draw some sort of flower cloud shape, and then once I'm done doing that, I'm going to dip my brush into the clean water again and dip it into a color. As you can see, wet on wet is great for abstract shapes and washes because the water takes quite a bit of time to dry, so you have a lot more time to move around the paint within the object. A helpful tip is uh, 
When the paint dries, it will be a lot lighter than you're seeing now. So you wanna make sure that you build up enough paint if you want the object to look a little bit more vibrant. Hold up, I just forgot that wet on wet starts with water. Rookie mistake. So I am going to start over. I already have a little bit of purple in there, but that's no big deal. I'm gonna take my clean water and start drawing that heart with the water. You know, watercolor is not going to be perfect, and that's part of the beauty of it. You can't really control everything that the watercolor does, especially with the wet on wet technique. So if you're someone who likes to just let the paint do their thing and not really be in control of the paint, wet on wet is the technique for you. Now I'm going to dip my pen into the purple. It's pretty fun to watch the paint kind of do its thing in the object. Sometimes I even just like leaving it exactly how it looks when I first dipped it into the water. Another thing you can do while the paint is still wet and you're using the wet on wet technique you can take the paper towel and actually absorb some of the water that's already on the object. So take your paper, rip a little bit, bunch it up into like a little point like this, and simply dab it into the heart. You can create cute little patterns. Obviously, I didn't have a lot of room here with the heart, but you can create cute little polka dot patterns or whatever you want with the paper towel. Now that I'm done with my wet on wet technique, I'm going to take my brush and wipe it off in the dirty cup of water and then just wipe off the excess water on this paper towel. Now I'm going to show you wet on dry. So I'm going to put wet paint onto the dry paper. Now I'm going to take my brush pen and simply dab it into the color that I want. What's great about these pens is you can also push this section right here and water will come out of the tip so you can mix it around in the palette. And then I'm going to draw the same object I did above so you can, guys can see the comparison between the two. As you can see, the paint is much more vibrant, but it's great for objects that you want more specific and more detailed. As you can see here, the edges are very blurred, but here you can get nice sharp edges. And this also allows you to add extra coats of paint fairly easily because you don't have to wait for them to dry. So as you can see here, the wet on wet is a little bit more blurred. The pigment is less vibrant than the pigment on the wet on dry. And the wet on dry technique, you can get much sharper edges and more precise points. But both techniques are great for beginners or anyone who is interested in starting watercolor. No technique is better than the other. It's going to be different from person to person. So find the technique that works for you and just roll with it. There are an endless amount of ways that you can incorporate watercoloring into your bullet journal. I'm gonna show you just a few basic examples that you can use, but really you can take them and run with them and make your bullet journal crazy with watercolors if you want. Like I said before, I'm going to paint all of the different elements for each part of my bullet journal, and then I'm going to cut them out and paste them in. So first I'm gonna show you the paint, and second I'm gonna show you how to cut and paste. For this video, I'm only going to show you how to incorporate watercoloring into your opener monthly and weekly, but that doesn't mean you can't use it in your habit tracker and your mood tracker for each week or really any other spread you want to. The first thing I want to do is a large abstract shape of clouds for the opener. I'm planning on drawing over the watercolor with the name of the month. So I'm not going to make these too dark because I want to be able to read the name of the month. I'm gonna make several cloud shapes using pink and purple. I'm not gonna to care too much about the edges, although you know I am a perfectionist, so I'm going to have to just deal with it. I'm using a wet on dry technique here because I wanted to use more specific shapes for the clouds. Um, but wet on wet also works for, especially for openers where you have a large amount of space that you wanna cover. You'll also notice that I'm using the brush pen as a brush. And that's because I like the thickness of the brush pen better than some of the larger brushes. Now that I'm done painting the element that I'll feature on my opener, I'm going to also draw on the same piece of paper the header that I'll use for my monthly. So for this header, I'm just going to simply draw a rectangle with pink and purple so that I can draw straight over the rectangle with a thick black marker with the name of the month. I'm gonna mix some of the purple in here. And I love how when there's a lot of water, you really don't need to rush very hard and try to mix the paints very well because the water will mix it itself. For my monthly and my weekly spreads, I'm going to paint little circles and little rectangles that I will draw over and paste into my bullet journal. 
I'm gonna use the same colors I used on the opener and the monthly header when I draw seven circles. I'm gonna make them about medium size so that I have enough space to write each initial for each day. And I'm going to mix both pink and purple. Again, I'm gonna let the water do a lot of the work here and not blend the paints too well together. Try to make each circle roughly the same size, but they're obviously going to vary, so nothing will be perfect. Sometimes when I use a little bit too much water than I anticipated, I'm going to start drawing the next circle and actually grab water from the previous circle and transfer it to this circle. There's always an easy way to fix watercolors. They're very forgiving. I have the seven circles done, and I'm now going to move on to the seven rectangles. I'm going to switch off colors for each day of the week. All of these little rectangle headers turned out a little bit different in size, but that's okay because when you cut and paste, you can adjust sizing to make them match. I'm now done with all of the elements that I'm going to feature in my monthly and my weekly, except for one. And that is the calligraphy I'm going to do for the name of the month on my weekly spread. What's great about these pens is they're actually meant for calligraphy. So I'm gonna show you how to write the word December using this pen. This pen works just like a brush pen, so you can get great calligraphy using this pen by applying extra pressure on the downstroke. As you can see, the pigment has faded by the time I get to the end of the letter, but the water is still there, and that's going to be helpful because you can dip your pen back into the paint and simply trace the word. And what's great about using a lot of water is you can simply drop a single amount of pink pigment into the water that you formed into a word, and it will spread out along the word. I actually painted all of these elements a little bit earlier today so that I could let them dry. And so now I'm going to cut them out and paste them into my bullet journal. So now I'm going to open up my bullet journal. The first thing I want to do is cut out my opener. I think I want to leave a small white border around the entire thing. And as you can see, I made a little bit of a cutting error and did not leave any white space around that cloud, but that is okay with me because a bullet journal is not meant to be perfect. Okay, so I've cut out my opener element and I'm going to paste it in the middle of the page using a glue stick. Definitely use a generous amount of glue when you are trying to glue down this opener element because it's very thick paper and it will likely come off if you don't use enough glue. All right, so I've pasted it into the middle section of my bullet journal. I'm now gonna take a thick black marker and write December over the top. All right, here is my December opener. Now that I'm done with my opener, I'm going to move on to my monthly layout. So I'm gonna cut out all of the little rectangles and the larger rectangle that I painted earlier. Before I paste on all of those little rectangles, and the larger rectangle, I'm going to draw out the calendar first. First, I'm going to take my ruler and draw boxes for each day of the month. I'm going to make each box about eight boxes wide and six boxes tall. Now I'm going to write the number for each day of the month in the bottom right corner. Now it's time to add the painted rectangles. I want to alternate the color between pink and purple, so I'm going to lay them out first. Now that I've pasted everything down, I'm going to write the day of the week above each column in the painted rectangle. The last thing I'm going to do is paste the header in the empty space towards the left of the calendar. I'm going to take my pen and write December over the rectangle. And there you go, a very basic monthly spread. This last spread I'm gonna show you is my weekly spread. I'm gonna use the last few elements that I made with the watercolors and paste those throughout the spread. I've cut out the seven circles that I showed you guys earlier and I've pasted each of them on. I'm gonna take my glue stick again and glue each of these down. Remember, use lots of glue and then show you how to beautify this spread. The next thing I wanna do for this weekly spread is to add in the calligraphy day of the month that I wrote out earlier. I cut out the word December that I had painted with the brush pen earlier. I'm gonna glue it and paste it on the left page above the three circles. I'm just going to beautify this header a little bit by adding some extra highlight lines. Now that you've seen a few watercolor techniques and ways to incorporate them into your bullet journal, I really hope you're inspired to pick up a watercolor palette and just get going whether you're experienced or not. And let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see next. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our future bullet journaling tips and tricks. See you next week.